Hi guys, today I want to talk about something that's really a burning question on the minds of most people who consider a career in BIM for themselves. And that question is, do I need to go to the university to study BIM? Well, I did. Um, I'm probably one of the few practicing BIM professionals that actually has a university degree in BIM. So today I wanted to share some of my experiences with you so you can be informed if this choice is actually worth it for you or if you are better off teaching yourself based on videos available for free right here on YouTube. The program I did was the European BMA Plus Master. At the time, it was an Erasmus Mundus Master, which means that I, I was eligible to get funding from the Erasmus Mundus organization and that is how I was able to afford to study BIM at university. The duration of the master was about 10 to 12 months with six months of coursework delivered in three week sprints and four to six months of thesis work depending on how quick you could finish your thesis. Now this duration is one of the things you should consider if getting a degree in BIM is something you're thinking about because there are other programs online, including certifications, that you can do in a shorter time as opposed to spending 10 to 12 months in a university setting studying BIM. The course content consists of six different modules covering different aspects of BIM, including the more managerial aspects, as well as the technical aspects that involve how to use software to perform tasks on the job. Now, I know that 10 to 12 months might seem like a long time, and it is, but to be honest, a lot of the time, my colleagues and I really felt overwhelmed with how much we had to cover because the program was kind of condensed so we could get the most of all the professionals at our disposal and go from barely knowing about BIM to being worthy of being a BIM manager. And for some people, that's too long to spend in school, which is very understandable. But I must say that even though it feels like a long time, the content really does fill up the time and before you know it, it's over. If you'd like a more detailed description of what we covered in each module, please leave a comment below so that I'm aware that it's something you would like to see. For this master, the mode of instruction was a combination of in-person and online learning. For some people, they are kind of used to working from home and so learning from home feels more natural to them at this point. However, I must say that considering how challenging the new content of Vim can be, having in-person collaboration with your classmates is very, very much preferred than going the traditional method of teaching yourself or enrolling in a program that's strictly online. That being said, due to restrictions of COVID, there were some parts of the course that we did have to take from home. I must admit in my personal experience that those were the hardest parts of the course because a lot of the progress that I made personally was with the help of my colleagues. So it's worth considering if setting aside the time to do an in-person program for 10 to 12 months is something you can actually pull off. Otherwise, maybe it's worth considering going for an online program. Now let's talk about the cost. Obviously, you have to pay to do a master and that's the biggest barrier to education for most people. The course costs about $9,000 and that's for the fees only. For the program that I did, you had the option of picking two out of three universities in three European cities. The options are Italy, Portugal or Slovenia. Now, Italy, which was specifically the city of Milan, was significantly more expensive than the other two locations. I know that since my course ended, there have been updates to the locations of the program. I don't think that Italy is still one of the universities you can choose. And there is also an option to only pick one destination. The city you choose to live in will impact on what it will cost you with rent sometimes ranging from 500 even up to 800 or 900 in Milan at the time. It's significantly cheaper if you were to study say in Portugal or in Slovenia because the rent prices there, even though higher than expected as a student, are significantly more manageable. And then, of course, what happens after the master, you might be asking. 
Am I likely to get a job? Is this course going to set me up with a company? Well, that depends on whether or not you're intending to settle in the city you selected. Like I said earlier, you do have a choice of which cities you have to pick to do the course. And I would advise that you pick a city where you intend on living because the chances that you would be able to do your thesis project, which is a six month long project with a company in that city are quite high. The program does assist you and offer you a lot of opportunities to do your thesis program with a company. And so if you choose Portugal as your choice of thesis destination, then the chances of doing a thesis in a Portuguese BIM company are high. And that is your leg into the company. That, that is your foot in the door. That is where you get a chance to show your work ethic and prove that you will be a valuable contribution to their team. Now, due to my personal choices, I left Europe after the master's and moved to Toronto, Canada. And I must say that having a degree in BIM really helped me in terms of proving that I knew what I was applying for. Now, if I didn't have a degree in BIM, maybe I would have gotten a job as an engineer or an architect because of my background. But having a degree in BIM qualified me for a BIM coordinator position right off the bat. Now, this is important because I do have experience as a BIM manager, but when you are moving to a new country, it's usually difficult for the companies to trust or validate the experience that you have. If this is your case, then having a BIM degree would definitely help you stand out from the rest of the applicants as someone who's actually competent in a BIM specific role. Bear in mind that for most companies, there are not that many roles for BIM. There's usually a BIM manager, and if the team is large enough or if the company is large enough, there's a few more people supporting the BIM manager. So it's quite competitive, even though there's not that many people vying for the position of BIM. Having a degree is what sets you apart from the typical person who has some kind of maybe Revit certificate or they've done some LinkedIn courses. When you have a degree and you are positioning yourself for a BIM role as a manager or a coordinator it's easier for the company to trust that you can deliver on the promise and that it's not a waste of resources to bring you on the team this is important because for many companies the resource struggle with how many people do we really need to do BIM is still very much in the conversation and so there's not a lot of room to just hire anybody for the role of BIM now back to the question i'm sure you've been asking since i started this video is it worth spending 10 to 12 months leaving your country and going to Europe to study a degree in BIM? Do I have to do this to get a job in BIM? The short answer is no. A majority of the people who are actually practicing BIM today all over the world did not get a degree in BIM. They were able to prove their experience either by working or by doing other courses that prove to their employer that they were able to handle the challenge. Typically, this person was an engineer or architect who was already on the team and showed a tendency and an interest for solving problems using technology. So no, if you're already in a role or in an office where there isn't a BIM professional, it is your opportunity to step up, teach yourself the skills, and start providing solutions to your team. And then you can pitch yourself as a BIM manager or BIM coordinator to your employer. However, if you're going to a country or you already live in a country where there is already a kind of saturation in people claiming to have BIM expertise, which is becoming more commonplace these days, that people get to have Revit experience or a few projects where they implement BIM, and they claim that they are experts. These people are now also competing for BIM positions with you and having a degree sets you significantly apart from those people. That being said, I don't regret doing a degree in university for BIM. It's been very enriching for me. I did learn a lot of things that I didn't know even when I was in practice. I spent four years as a BIM manager in practice in West Africa and I taught myself most of the things I needed to do the job. That was my first sort of deep dive into the exciting world of BIM. Now having the degree and learning from professionals that have been doing this since the inception of BIM 
completely changed my worldview about BIM. I learned more that the BIM manager is not just a technical advisor, but also has an impact on the financial performance of a company. And I must tell you, your ability to impact the financial performance of where you work determines how valuable you are to that team. And let me know if there's anything you wanted to hear that I didn't cover in this video, and I'll be sure to make a video about it subsequently. Please subscribe if you like this content or let me know if there's a different kind of content related to BIM that you would like to hear more of. I'm happy that you gave me this much of your time. Stay curious. You've got this. If BIM is what you want to do, it's very possible. Just keep learning and you'll be fine. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.